methylphenidate was first synthesized in 1944 by a pharmaceutical company. By the late 1950s and early 1960s, it was being marketed clinically for several disorders, including attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, narcolepsy, and depression. However, the main use of methylphenidate is in the treatment of ADHD. The neurochemical actions of methylphenidate, once it enters the brain, it binds to dopamine transporter on the membrane of the dopaminergic neurons and to the norepinephrine transporter on the membrane of the noradrenergic cells. The effects of this binding is to block the reuptake of dopamine and norepinephrine, therefore increasing the extracellular levels of both neurotransmitters. Taken orally, methylphenidate has the behavioral profile of a typical psychostimulant. Lab studies of healthy non-ADHD participants found dose-dependent increases in subject arousal and alertness, perceived ability to concentrate, and positive mood. Some studies showed that methylphenidate influenced cognitive function and positive effects on working memory and cognitive processing speed. Cognitive processes were enhanced with doses between 10 to 20 mg, whereas doses higher than this failed to produce the same effect. A German researcher published a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study on the ability of methylphenidate or modafinil to improve competitive performance in chess players. Both compounds increased the performance of the chess players when compared with the placebo treatment. The most widespread use of prescription stimulants for non-medical use was among students. A longitudinal survey at a university found that 60% of respondents had been offered a prescription stimulant for non-medical purposes. When non-ADHD students use these stimulants, it enables them to study for longer periods of time. However, does the use improve results? The four-year longitudinal study had shown no improvement on grades. Another study looked at six different universities focusing on individuals who had relatively poor academic performances related to low executive functioning. Even within this group, which might be expected to benefit the most from the stimulant, no improvements of grades were recorded. Methylphenidate has abuse potential due to its pharmacological profile of elevating brain dopaminergic transmission. However, the dose of risk depends greatly on the route of administration. There is little risk of abuse when the drug is taken orally in recommended doses. Tablets that are formulated for immediate release can be crushed and taken intranasal or IV injection. These routes provide rapid drug entry into the brain, causing a high similar to that of cocaine or amphetamine. Methylphenidate is predominantly marketed as an ADHD treatment. However, it also has a potential use as an emergence from general anesthesia. Although it has not yet been tested on humans, if no adverse side effects are observed, then this novel therapeutic application of methylphenidate could make its way into routine medical practice. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.